interested in eternal life? And how many of them are interested in how to inherit eternal life? Ask them, do you want to know about the eternal life? And do you want to know about how to inherit it? What will be their response? In most cases, young men and young women are not interested in eternal life at all. What they see is fun, the most risk of fashion trend and new clothes for women, new electronic gadgets for men, and pleasure. With all of this, if you look around at the churches, everywhere, most of the churches have a bunch of seniors, and they are hardly young people. The vast majority of young people focus on only material things and very temporary things. But the young man in our last lesson is quite different. Strangely, he is seeking eternal life and how to inherit it. He might have inner maturity, and that's why he is looking for not temporary and material things, but eternal life. But it seems that he is looking for a different reason. Our text says that he has great possession. Our text clearly shows that he was a very rich guy. There is no doubt that he had so-called a dream house that was very luxurious and nicely decorated with many bedrooms, bathrooms, living rooms, kitchen, and nice backyard. And he had beautiful and luxurious suits and garments that ordinary people never be able to have and to wear. And he had beautiful and very expensive Arabian horses to ride and board ornamented chariots and wagons and a bunch of male and female servants who served him 24 hours a day and 365 days a year and a beautiful sailboat to ride on the Sea of Galilee. Literally, he had everything that we can imagine because he was so rich. Definitely he enjoyed a very and very good and luxurious life each and every day. And then he developed a concern because he began to feel that the life here is too short to enjoy all the good things that he had. In fact, he is not the only one who seeks eternal life among the rich people. Throughout the whole history, there have been many rich people who desperately seek eternal life. For example, the pharaohs of the ancient Egypt were desperately seeking eternal life because truly the life here was too short for them. As the kings, they owned and enjoyed everything, such as absolute power, extremely luxurious palace, beautiful, beautiful wives and concubines, all kinds of delicious food that were available from the entire planet, and so on. And they could perfectly control everyone and everything in their country under their thumbs. No one could speak against him, and for everyone, only one thing was required for the king. Absolute obedience. With all of this, they acted like God over their people, and the people were forced to believe and to praise the pharaohs as a living God. But the pharaohs felt that the life here was too short to enjoy all those things so that they wanted to have eternal life to enjoy what they had forever. So for their dream of eternal life, they built huge pyramids as the tombs for the pharaohs and they preserved the, the dead bodies of the pharaohs as a mummy and a pyramid. <coughs> 
waiting and waiting and waiting for eternal life. Imagine, if you were a king like that, what would you feel? Absolutely, you will feel that the life here is so good, and sadly, the life is too short here. Today, still, some rich people seek eternal life, or possibly longer and healthy life through the best medical service and health care, or different religions. However, the files fail to acquire eternal life. And other religions, or the best medical service on the planet, or good health care, also do not bring eternal life either. Jesus Christ gives the answer for the question of eternal life very clearly and plainly. He says, Send all that you have and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. And come and follow me. Isn't that clear enough? Sell out everything that you have, and then come to me and follow me. But isn't that shocking? What if Jesus Christ says it directly to you and to me that aren't you going to be shocked and very concerned? Selling out my house, my car, and everything, and then following Jesus Christ? Well, in fact, fortunate, fortunately, selling out all we have is not directly applicable to you and to me. The reason why Jesus said that to the young man was that his possession was certainly a blessing for his earthly, temporary life here, but his possession was the absolute barrier for receiving and inheriting eternal life. As a result, Jesus Christ gives him a very challenging choice. Your possession or eternal life. Which one you pick up? If you and I are focusing too much on the earthly and material things, for the life here, yes, what Jesus Christ says is directly applicable. <coughs> Give up what you have and you are focusing on now and come to me and follow me. You will inherit eternal life. Well, I guess some of you have traveled to Europe, right? Okay, well, I guess, uh, yeah, right, also to this reason we came back from Hungary. Okay, so of um, course, I, I guess some of you have been to Italy, right? Italy is well known for beautiful and magnificent cathedrals. In the cathedral of Milan, there are three gates lead into the cathedral. Over one gate is an inscription. It says, the things that please are temporary. Over the second gate is the inscription. The things that disturb us are temporary. And over the central gate is a big inscription which says, eternal things are the important ones. We tend to understand the eternal life as meaningful life, or meaning life without end, but eternal life, as used in St. John's Gospel, implies not just a superlative quantity or duration of life, but also a superlative quality. Eternal life differs from just the everlasting life, which is merely quantitative. The devil and his angels have everlasting life in that they never die, but they do not enjoy eternal life, which is the life of a perfect happiness and peace in union with God. What the human soul desires is not just everlasting life, but eternal life. 
a life of perfect union with our God, which cannot be diminished neither in duration nor in satisfaction. This is the life that Jesus Christ gives us. As he says in St. John chapter 10, verse 10, I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. To have eternal life is to be fully alive. Amazingly, we inherit that eternal life. How? Our Lord just poured down his saving grace on each of you and me in our baptism, cleansing us, adopting us as his precious children and heir of his kingdom and beneficiaries of eternal life. And in St. John chapter 6, Jesus Christ says, Very truly I tell you, unless you eat the flesh, my flesh, and drink my blood, has eternal life. And I will raise them up at the last day. In our baptism, our good Lord has given us the qualification for the inheritance of eternal life and made us the beneficiaries of and heirs of eternal life and his kingdom. And in Holy Eucharist, he truly and physically gives us eternal life through his true body and blood. We receive that eternal life that the pharaohs and the young rich men in our text and many other kings, emperors, and rich people were desperately seeking just as a free gift by God's grace in Jesus Christ. In fact, we are more blessed than the young student who inherited 950 million euros. I know that it is not easy for us to recognize it, but we will see it. It could take only several decades to see. But most certainly, just within several decades, we will be seeing and enjoying amazing <coughs> blessings of eternal and perfect life in Jesus Christ and with Jesus Christ. But also for the life here, which is very temporary, our Lord still gives us his care and strength to endure. For an improved and better life here and also eternal life in his kingdom. Come and faithfully follow our Lord Jesus Christ. Focus on the eternal things and the Lord rather than the temporary and material things. The first step of doing that is faithful coming to the Lord's grace, coming to you and to me through the Holy Word and especially the Holy Sacraments without skipping. I hope you and I can faithfully come to his wonderful gifts and follow him that your life and my life may be enriched by the power of our Savior Jesus Christ to life everlasting in his kingdom. Amen. May the peace of God which surpasses all understanding give your hearts and minds to Jesus Christ our Savior both now and